All right. So I'm Peter Kern from createdigitalmusic.com and here with Cyril, the chief engineer at Moog. Uh, we've been talking all day about process and how instruments come together and the process of design and making mistakes and eventually bringing things together to a product. And we're here now with something that's almost finished. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Okay, um, this is our latest Mografoger. It's, uh, it's the MF 108M. It's called the Cluster Flux, and it's basically a really advanced chorus flange um, modular um, Mografoger. And at its core is just a, um, a really great sounding um, chorus or flange um, uh, effect. Um, and uh, we use the old Panasonic high voltage DVDs, which are very hard to get right now, especially in the flange region. So um, it's a very limited edition run. We'll, we'll make them as long as we can get the, the chips. Yeah, tell us a little bit about, we can talk about things sounding great. We always say stuff sounds great. What makes this sound great? What makes this sound different than, than other stuff in this category? Well, I mean, quite, quite a few things, but um, at, the, at the heart is the bucket gate like a brigade devices, which are the chips, which basically, um, they're called that because they're like a row of, of buckets, and, and you take, if you think of your sound in one moment of time as, as a, like a drop of water, you would take that drop of water, put it in this bucket, and instead of listening it, then you pass it down a stream of buckets, and then you listen to it when it get, gets out to the end. If you think about how quickly you transfer that drop of water down the um, buckets, that determines how much you delay the sound. And then you mix that with the original sound and you get the kind of classic um, flange and chorus or analog delay, of course. Um, and additionally, you can take that drop of water and then feed it back and put it back in the, um, in the bucket, and that's called feedback. And how, how often you do that determines how much these buckets build up and, and feed back on each other. And, and it, you know, the frequency of your in, input sound versus how quickly the clocking creates these very neat um, you know, filtering effects, which is what we're used to hearing. Um, so the, the high voltage chips have a, are, are, um, are, are cleaner sounding and also just all the support circuitry that we use to, um, uh, and also very um, important in this is how you filter, how you filter because you're clocking and so, so the filtering in, in this type of effect is really, really important. So we spent a, a lot of time working on the sound of it getting it just to where we wanted to. And then additionally, we added all the, the classic Moog things, thinking of it more as a modular effect rather than just, just a standalone thing so that you can, everything's controlled by control voltages, which makes the, makes the effect a lot more complicated, but allows you to have incredible flexibility in what kinds of sounds the effect can make. And, and that allows the, um, this Moog like all our gear, to be able to go outside in all directions, the norms of a classical chorus flange, and that's always our inspiration. So it's the it's the it's the timing. It's these kind of special chips, these rare chips, and um, then also the the analog approach to, to how you control all the timing. Mm -hmm. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah, and the filtering and the fact that we're controlling everything with voltages. Right. Um, so um, all that all that. Add, all those components add up to the totality of the sound. Mm -hmm. The way you know control voltage works, it has a certain colors to sound a certain way. The, the, the actual bucket brigades, the way you clock them, colors to sound a certain way. The way you filter before you go in, the way you filter afterwards, colors. So that you know, in any design, there's there's um, hundreds of decisions you make along the way. Sure. And and your endpoint is a result of all those decisions. And a lot of those decisions are often compromises. So, I mean, the, the art of making a, 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 an instrument or, or um, a piece of gear is to, is to make the right choices so that it all works together to create something really beautiful and inspiring. <laughs> right. Well, I yeah. should let us hear a little bit of it. Um, okay. We'll keep talking, yeah. Yeah, so what, what I'll do first is I'll just kind of um, demonstrate the classic chorus and flange, and then we'll kind of go into kind of the more expansive features. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to use the little fatty here, and just to make it easy on ourselves, I've, I've just got an arpeggiator going. And um, this, is, um, this is just a little fatty without, without any sound. This is totally dry. Right? Totally dry. I turn on the internet. This is a prototype, so you're going to hear some funny stuff. 
hear about in flange mode. On the, adjust the, the amount we're feeding back the bucket. So if I don't feed back the bucket at all, you'll hear that uh, sounds very much like a little fatty. As I start feeding it back, and I adjust the, how quickly we're um, moving the buckets. And then, classic flanging effects. Um, I can also put this in chorus. And get some classic chorus effects too. Now actually if I turn this off a little bit and then I'm... Now let's listen to it without the arpeggio so you can actually hear it. Modulation is doing. Yeah. So that's a real slow kind of classic chorus. If I turn the modulation up a lot, I'm going to turn the speed up a bit. Now what I'm doing here is I'm changing how much I'm modulating, how quickly. I can also change the phase. So, let's just, just get some nice classic. Modulation. The modulation is really the key to how we expand the sound. And what the modulation is doing is it's modulating the delay time, or, or as I was saying, how quickly we move the drops of water through the bucket. Right. And what's that actually doing? It's doing time domain modulation of the sound. So if you think about it, that, that's, um, you can get a vast amount of different effects with how you modulate the sound, and it, it's almost kind of resynthesizing the different frequencies. So let's take off. So let's take a simple, um, here's a sine wave, and why don't I, first I'm going to turn, I'm going to turn the, the time something. First I'm going to focus on getting kind of really um, explicit effects that aren't necessarily musical, but just so that we can demonstrate. So I'm, I'm, with the sine wave, I'm modulating the time up and down, you can just kind of wait for triangle wave. Kind of similar, but a little bit more sharp on the edges. Now here I'll do a square wave. Thank you. 
it's kind of uh, inexhaustible really, but uh, now let's kind of play away, let's do some flange now. And so it was really important for us to add tap tempo on there as well. Um, uh, and then, like any Mogrefoger, we have all the control voltage input outputs. So you can control most of the panel features with an expression pedal or with a, a voltage from one of our other synthesizers or other modulation sources or a 201 you know, floor pedal. So it, again, any of our Mogrefogers work in concert with all, all of all of our other instruments and any CV enabled gear. Just earlier today, we were hooking up our CV gear to some of the rack stuff, and that's, that's always really fun. So, so the, any of our Mogrefogers work in that context. Mm -hmm. um, and then additionally, finally, um, it's MIDI controllable. And while the audio path is completely analog, what we've done is be, be able to modulate any front panel control via MIDI but also um, be able to MIDI sync the LFO as well. And that, that, that allows you to work really well in the, um, in the uh, kind of digital audio workstation, or you know, with, especially with these kind of, um, with these kind of things. You know, let's say you've got some kind of very, let's kind of, you know, let's say you've got, a, a, you know, something where you've got a drum track. Well, sure, you would want to be able to. to right. Sync so let's say you, you know, in the yeah. classic world today, you've got that an Ableton Live trash, sure. but you want to sync. You want to have your analog gear modulating at the same thing. So we feel it's kind of indispensable nowadays to be able to supply that kind of MIDI sync. Sure. What it also allows you to do is we can actually, um, we can actually uh, we'll, um, control actual time very accurately from your digital system too. So you can actually choose the frequency that you want to modulate at. So that's another really kind of. Um, really kind of expansive feature to, to that effect that's not your typical excuse me <laughs> it's been a long day um, so basically really great flange core then we've got a really flexible modulation module in there and very similar to some of our other modules and 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 the LFO is can be controlled with from the front panel can be controlled from expression pedals or control voltages, can be controlled by tap tempo and MIDI sync. So it enables you to, to either use this just as a classic chorus flange. I should also mention that it's got a stereo output, which for chorus flange is, is really great. And there's a couple different ways. There's dip switches on the inside of the thing that you can open up the back and select different ways, just dry or wet or right and left, um, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, so there's, um, Getting a stereo, really great stereo flange, or work great in the studio or with the stereo keyboard setup. Um, so, those are all the great features um, of the unit.